And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the nation's sharpest opinion. An interesting but very significant development was lost amidst the headlines today. Sonia Gandhi has, by all indications, retired. She has retired from electoral politics. Not going to fight Lok Sabha elections. Sonia Gandhi at a time when her party is disintegrating, breaking, wilting in relevance, at a time when her party is being avoided like the plague, insulted by every other potential ally from ground level Kada to, ladies and gentlemen, generational loyalists. Sonia Gandhi has done the smart thing and understood it's not going to work, that she can't win an election anymore. She's opted out of the Lok Sabha. The significance should be lost on no one that Sonia Gandhi has retired from electoral politics. Just on the eve of the 2024 elections. Before the Congress is projected to have its most dismal performance in a general election, she has abandoned the ship. This abandoning of the ship, or should we call it a canoe or a kayak, whatever is left of the Congress, just months before the election, is a surety beyond measure that perhaps even Raibareli is not secure for Sonia Gandhi anymore, that she will lose even in Raibareli. It is also significant because Sonia Gandhi conveniently parks herself in the Rajya Sabha instead of going before the people in a Lok Sabha contest, which means she knows she will lose. After all, Rahul Gandhi has lost. She will also lose. And after trying and failing so badly to launch and relaunch and launch and relaunch and launch and relaunch, her non-achiever washout son Rahul Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi can pretend all his life in, at the age of 55 to be discovering India in a luxury bus, but the fact is that he's a political disaster, a failure. And you see leaders of merit like Himanta Biswa Sarma, who abandoned the Congress and are now transforming ground up through governance, slide the entire Congress from under Sonia Gandhi's hold in Assam. The largest story for me on a day when Himanta Biswa Sarma has broken the Congress, he just broke it. The Congress working president in Assam has joined the BJP. MLAs are joining the BJP. The party broke down the middle. And what does that tell you? That tells you, ladies and gentlemen, that the Congress is packing up. There is no hope for the Congress. So much so that even political entities like the Ahmadmi Party with a minimum national presence are booting the Congress out and saying, you don't deserve anything, but because we have pity on you, we'll give you one seat in Delhi. Ladies and gentlemen, my opinion is really that the Congress is over. The ship is not sinking, it has sunk, it is reaching ground, it is reaching rock bottom. So it is not a surprise for me that any leader looking for the long-term game is jumping off that ship. Not that I think Ashok Chavan going to the BJP is going to help the BJP, it won't. But when Sonia Gandhi herself opts out of the electoral contest, that is significant. I spoke earlier today to Himanta Biswa Sarma. Here's a clip. One of the big stories of the day has been uh, the breakup of the Congress party. And we can only call it a complete breakup in Assam. It's been orchestrated, of course, by Himanta Bishwa Sharma, who heads the NEDA and is the chief minister of Assam. Uh, he's joining me now. Uh, uh, Mr. Himanta Bishwa Sharma, this was most unexpected. You've called it a return gift to Rahul Gandhi. And the general feeling is that you have a very personal battle going on with Rahul Gandhi in particular. Especially your comment that it's a return gift, you know, seems to make it a more and more a personal and bitter battle. Rahul Gandhi everywhere has been targeting you personally more than any other chief minister or BJP leader. What's going on between you and Rahul Gandhi and why do you call it a return gift to him? You see, uh, Rahul Gandhi came to Assam at a time when the Ram Mandir Pran Patista Samaru was scheduled in Ayodhya. He came into a most communally sensitive place in Assam with the sole intention to disturb peace and tranquility. While he goes back from Assam, he called all the MLAs of uh, Congress party and Categorically told them that this is a good thing. He used the word fardo. CM is a good thing. 
After that, Assam Assembly session has been convened. And today I can tell you with the, all the authority in my command that this assembly was the most peaceful assembly and for the first time, neither during the governor's speech or during the budget or discussion, opposition has worked out. That means the entire Congress party has defied the dictate of Rahul Gandhi. Today, four Congress MLA has come to my office and they said, that we are very, very happy with the kind of development work Prime Minister Narendra Modi has initiated. Of course, Assam has seen a transformational kind of journey and we are with Prime Minister Modi and we are going to do everything in our command to help the government. So today, this is four MLA, but there are many more in line. And I am sure with the days to come, Unless Rahul decide to come Assam and contest election, he will not find easily a candidate to contest election here in Assam. But aren't you concerned, you know, you're taking up half the Congress party with you. What about the ideological purity of the BJP? You see, uh, we, we know that what is the uh, background of this MLA. In Assam, BJP organization has been enriched by the people coming from different parties like AGP, ASU, also from Congress because it is still an evolving party in Assam. And I am sure that those who have come to our party, they come with the, after having a lot of inspiration from Prime Minister Modi. And I am sure that once you come into the BJP, we'll give you ideological training, we'll give you everything for which you have to work. And always bringing people into our fold is called ideological advancement. Our ideology is inclusive. It is not exclusive. So we have to keep on taking people till the last nationalist is there in the other party. We have to bring back all the nationalist forces into BJP. I, I, I sort of understand, but you know, uh, at a national level, you are one of the senior most and most effective and popular BJP leaders, not just in Assam, but nationally. And I found that, I find that of the last six months, Especially if you saw the Prime Minister's speech in response to the President's address also, the focus is the Congress party. Always the Congress party. It's not a regional party. It's not DMK. It's not even Amadmi party. At a one-to-one -one level, it is the Congress party. Everybody says, why is the BJP going after the Congress party, which is, on a, which is so weak anyway? And you are also uh, doing the same thing in Assam. Why is your focus the Congress party? You see... Uh Congress party is now actively involved with, with the anti-national forces. Today, in, in the backdrop of Kisan agitation, you have seen that what kind of absurd promises the Congress party is offering only to encourage kind of disturbance in our country. Rahul Gandhi is now out to destroy the basic fabric of the society and he is thoroughly now influenced by the so-called ultra-left uh, uh, section of, of our uh, entire ecosystem. Congress party is not the same Congress party. Today, this Congress party has been taken over by Tukre Tukre gang. So it is very, very important to disseminate Congress party because if you disseminate Congress party, you are disseminating anti-national forces. We, we want to see that this election finally bring the final uh, death knell to the Congress party. And that is our immediate objective. Of course, there are many regional parties who are in NDA. There are many regional parties who are in so-called Indi Gadbandhan. But I am sure that all the regional parties will understand that have with uh, being with Congress, there is no premium. They should come and they should join hands with Prime Minister Modi. 
but which which anti national forces is rahul gandhi you made a very big statement you must substantiate yes. it you must give some proof for it this is a headline grabbing statement you are saying rahul gandhi is working with anti national forces he is a representative of anti national forces is that just your claim just a political claim you are no, making mr uh, sharma because Arnab, of your long standing enmity and battle with rahul gandhi arnab you know that congress was always encouraged by gandhian principle congress was never close to the left kind of politics today right from slogan hearing the when i was in congress party we used to hear different kind of slogan today in the every congress rally every congress yatra you will hear new kind of slogans which are the tune and tenor of this was original in the jnu so now you will also see there are the congress party's politics has get has now been transformed from gandhian politics to the left politics now they are not a centrist party they are almost in a line they are going with the line of leftist parties and there are many more things which i am personally aware because of my long association with congress party and that is why i can tell with lot of confidence that this congress is not the congress which was founded by gandhi ji lal bahadur shastri sardar ballabh bhai patel today congress party has been hijacked by anti national forces and rahul politics is all about disseminating this country wherever anarchy he goes there and he try to fuel anarchists he try, he try to encourage anarchists so he is in a most dangerous mood he is now symbolize the anarchism in this country and he is out to destroy the social and economic fabric of this country well uh, well mr sharma i thank you for your uh, for your take and the big story of the day ladies and gentlemen himanta biswa sharma breaks the congress party in assam calls it a return gift to rahul gandhi mr sharma thank you thank you very much thank, thank you, you.